Most people don't reach their dream, not because of failure. Most people don't live their dream because they give up. You see, it's not the failure that stops us, but that most stop at their first failure. Those who succeed don't stop at one failure. They don't stop at 10 failures. They don't stop at 100, 1,000, or a million. They say, this is my goal, and I will do whatever it takes to achieve it. I will learn the lessons from any failures. I will learn faster. I will work harder. I will work smarter. And I will not quit until my dream is a reality. That's the difference between success and failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out, you're actually seeking failure. You want to take your muscles to the point where you get to failure because that's where the, the adaptation is. That's where growth is. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed. They extract the lessons from the failure and they use that, the, the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success gotta take a shot you have to live at the edge of your capabilities you gotta live where you're almost certain you're gonna fail the reason for practice practice is controlled failure you're getting to your limit getting to your limit getting to your limit you can't lift that you can't do that you until you get to the point that all of a sudden your body makes the adjustment and then you can do it failure uh, actually helps you to recognize the areas where you need to evolve. So fail early, fail often, fail forward. Failure makes winners stronger. Failure makes winners hungrier. But it makes most give up. It makes most feel worthless. Winners don't enjoy failure, but they would never let failure stop them. Next time you encounter failure, you got to remember every great thing on this planet is here because the Creator learned what did work, but learned more from what did not work. When we are kids, we don't stop at failure. When we first learn to ride a bike, it's failure after failure. We get knocked down time after time, but we get up and push forward until we achieve our goal of riding the bike. But then, we get old, and most of us get weak. We are too soft to get back on the bike. We come up with excuses. It must not be for me. No, you just soft. No, you just lazy. Tell yourself the truth. Get back on the bike. Learn why you fail, and make sure you don't fall again. Make sure you are stronger for having the lesson. You know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. You're here right now at this moment because tomorrow you want to be somebody greater than the person you are today. You see yourself succeeding, you have a vision, you have a dream. Congratulations, you're already 10 steps ahead of 95% of the world. Imagine if Michael Jordan was scared of missing. He would have never taken a shot. Imagine if Steve Jobs was afraid of people not liking his product. There would be no iPhone. So ask yourself this. Do you want to be a person who fears failure or do you want to be a person who loves success? Which one? Because you're going to have to pick today. And I'll tell you one thing. One is a failure and one is a success. And if you love success, there is nothing that can stop you. All those negative things people say will mean nothing. They're going to talk about how only 1% make it to the top. Big deal. Want to know something else? 
Only 1% stick with that fitness program long enough to see results. Only 1% of nerds stick with that video game long enough to get good at it. Only 1% of relationships stick it out to the end. That doesn't mean you have a 1% chance. It just means you can't behave like the 99%. You'll have to do something better than giving up a month from now. Those are just numbers. You want to talk about numbers? Take a look around you and take a good look around you. Are you like 99% of the people around you? If you are, then you're in the wrong video, my friend. You have to love success just as much because that's what's going to allow you to get up and go for it. Being scared to fail won't do anything. In fact, when you love success and you start going for it, guess what happens? You're going to fail. You're going to fail 10 times, 100 times, maybe even 1,000 times. But that's okay. Failure isn't permanent. Falling isn't permanent. You get right back up and keep going. And this time, you're going to be stronger, wiser, and you'll be more driven than ever. And for every 10 failures, you'll land one success. You have to love success so much that you're willing to fail 10 times before you can succeed once. That's how a winner does it. I want to explain the biggest myth that most people think leads them to success. And here's the myth. You might believe if you're scared to fail, you won't fail. Lies. Biggest myth ever. And I believed it. You see, I always thought that being scared to fail in life would literally keep me from failing. I would look at the losers around me and I would say, sheesh, I never want to turn out like him. I really believe this train of thought would help me succeed. Until one day, I was walking down the street and I saw an old man, had a hat, suspenders, and a cane. He was about 80 years old. This old man was barely walking. He could walk, but the cane helped a lot. He was struggling. So anyway, he was walking across the street and he ended up falling. So I went over to go help him. And he gets up, says thank you, and we introduced ourselves. Had a little conversation, told me his name and I told him mine. His name was Robert, by the way. And right as he walked away, I told him, this is what I said. Robert, you should stay inside where it's safe, my friend. And Robert turns around and says to me, I love walking. And I love walking way more than I'm afraid of falling. So I ask him, well, what about your safety? Don't you want to live? And he told me this. These are the exact words he said. He said this. Solo, living means doing what you love to do. And if I had to fall here and there to do what I want to do in life, then so be it. And he just walked away. Never saw him again. That was it. But that statement really had me thinking, and it had me thinking hard, because I learned something that day. That's when I realized the true key to success. You see, I always thought if I could just fear the act of failing, and if I fear it like crazy, I will succeed. Because I thought the fear would magically motivate me to get out there and start taking action. But after that day, uh-uh. I realized something. I realized it's the love for success that will lead me to succeeding. So just imagine if Robert feared falling. Would he even start walking? Of course not. He wouldn't even do what he loved to do. He would sit at home and take no type of action. But he loved walking. Wasn't even scared to fall. It gave him life. That's what allowed him to get up and do it. He loved walking so much, he was willing to fall 10 times a day just to do it. And you have to be the same. 
So the next time someone tells you, you're gonna fail, you know what you tell them? Tell them they're right. But you're not afraid to fail. You're not afraid to take action. You're not afraid to jump. You're gonna fail 10 times, but you know what? It's cool. Because on the 11th time, you'll succeed. <laughs> oh, you'll succeed, all right. And it'll feel good. And while you're over here living the life of your dreams and complete happiness, guess where they're gonna be? That's right. There'll be failures, the real failures, over there where it's safe, scared to fail. Ironic, isn't it? You know, a lot of people come up to me and they ask me, Marco, what is it that motivates you most? And to answer their question, I reply back with a question. I say, what if I told you that you had one week left to live? Would you regret not pursuing your dreams, passions, and desires? Would you regret not living your life to the fullest? Would you regret not spending as much time with your family, friends, or loved ones? You know, Steve Jobs said in a speech one time that he used to wake up every morning, look in the mirror, and ask himself questions like this. And he said that if the answer was yes for too many days in a row, then he knew that he had to change something. And that should go for all of us. If you're living a life that you would not be okay with losing because you weren't able to do things you wanted to do, then now you know that you need to change something. Life is simply too short and unpredictable to not live exactly the way that you please. It is ridiculously unpredictable. It is possible that on any given day to die at any point throughout that day without ever being able to see it come. You know, when I was 13, I had this teacher who was an absolutely amazing person. I'd known him for several years then, and he had two kids, a loving wife. He was a man of God, contributed to the community. He gave us everything that he had, and he would bike to school every single day. I, I always remember him coming to school on his bike, and one morning on his way to school, it was early in the morning, he was crossing an intersection. A reckless driver comes out of nowhere, hits him, he dies on the spot, on the moment of impact. His death taught me so many valuable things in life. And one of them being that it went on to show that no matter how much you don't deserve to die, and no matter how good of a person you are, and no matter what your situation is, no matter anything, it goes to show that death is inevitable and random, and it will eventually consume each and every single one of us, whether it's in 50 years, in 10 years, next year, or even tomorrow. You cannot control it, the people around you cannot control it. As long as you're at the wrong place, at the wrong time, your whole life could disappear in the blink of an eye, along with everything you wished you could have done. Whether you're walking down the street, whether you're stepping into the elevator, whether you're walking down the stairs, whether you're, whether you're just existing. Listen, you'll see people from nowhere die of a heart attack, gone. No family history, no symptoms, no causes, nothing. It happens and that's the cruel life that we live in and it's something that we cannot control so what i want to make clear is that regardless of the path that you take in your life at one point death will consume you it doesn't care whether you floss your teeth in the morning whether you raise a family or not whether you go on to be rich poor a success a failure whether whatever you are still going to die at one point it is that simple and knowing that you're going to die soon should be the biggest motivation to both make the difficult decisions in life and to get your ass out of bed in the morning. So now the question becomes, what is it that you truly have to lose? If you pursue your dreams and you fail, sure you might be a little bit more financially unstable. You might experience stress or other feelings you wish you never had to experience. But either way, even if you fail, 
you will end up back to where you started, which is where you are now. So what do you literally have to lose? Some of you right now, you're thinking about maybe starting a business. You have a great idea that you wanna incorporate into your lifestyle. Maybe you're thinking about pursuing your dreams to the fullest. Maybe you're thinking about putting in the work to become a doctor, an engineer, a firefighter, a professional athlete, but some of you won't follow these ambitions because you're afraid. You're afraid to fail. You let the fear of failure dictate your actions and you're afraid of what mama or papa thinks. You're afraid of what your sister, your brother thinks or, or your grandpa or your grandma or your cousins or whoever. But what truly matters is you. You are in possession of a gift. You have a talent and whatever that talent is, you can make yourself and the people around you a stronger and better place with it. But sometimes the only way to do that is to take a risk. At one point, you have got to take a leap if you wanna make that gift that you have become a reality. Otherwise, society will gladly accept you as a nine to five slave working just to pay off your rent and to stay alive and to live for the weekend, which is the absolute worst way to live. If you don't jump, believe me, if you don't pursue your gift, you will live a life full of regret and your gift, your dreams, everything that you ever had to offer to the world will die with you. From firsthand experience, I am pissed off at myself. I am pissed off and I regret so much in my life. I can't even fathom explaining it. Not about, not about what I've done, but what I haven't done. All the opportunities that I turned down and all the chances that I never took just because I was afraid or because I was worried about what other people think. And I officially decided to sit down. I sat down for weeks. I didn't, I didn't just think of what I'm saying right now. I didn't think of it overnight. This is months, this is months of thinking and I just sat down and I just wrote. And after comparing the randomness of death versus the chance of you failing while relentlessly pursuing your dreams versus the chance of you living a terrible life because you failed at pursuing your dreams versus just calling it a day right now and living a traditional Western world lifestyle versus everything you can think of versus absolutely everything. And I can gladly say that right now, as of this moment right here, I would rather live each day as if it were my last and take every risk possible in these sacred moments that I have on earth now to make myself as successful and happy as possible than to be sitting in my deathbed when I'm 90 years old regretting not taking a chance and thinking about what my life could have been if I just jumped when I was 18 or when I was 15 or when I was 22 because tomorrow is not a promise. I would rather die trying to live my dreams than to live a longer life filled with regret. Life is too short and too unpredictable to live it. I've seen it firsthand. It is not worth it to live it safe, basic, and traditional. But do you know why most people choose to live that, that safe life over taking risks in their life? I mean, there's a pretty good argument not to. Why, why would you? Why would you take a risk that puts you through stress, puts your family through stress, makes you lose sleep, makes you lose time, makes you put in the extra work, makes you take ridiculous chances that are one to 1,000? You know, but before I even continue, the fact that I'm even sitting here and talking is astonishingly ridiculous on its own. The chance of you being born is one to 400 trillion. That number is so big you cannot even wrap your head around it. But okay, what, what I wanted to say was that the reason why people don't wanna take these risks is because right now they feel like they got a lot to lose and that their current situation is relatively nice. And most importantly, right now, they are comfortable. They got used to living basic within society standards, being with their friends every now and then, being well rested, they got comfortable. And when you get comfortable, you don't wanna move. And that comfort zone, I like to call it the danger zone because th this comfort zone will persuade you to stay in there for as long as possible. And it is, I know, I know how it is. I know the comfort zone. It is so convincing. It is so hard to escape comfort. I know, and, and as it persuades you to stay in there, you will literally, unconsciously, see, I'm so serious when I say this, you will literally see your whole life go right by you. And the main reason that I'm serious about this now is because I am pissed off for greatness. I wanna move mountains. And like Ray Lewis once said, if you're not pissed off for greatness, then you're okay with being mediocre. And I am definitely not okay with being average. And I don't think anyone should be, but anyways, 
to address why I'm even talking about any of this at all in the first place is because I recently got an offer to move out to Los Angeles, California to live with two other entrepreneurs as a content creator and media influencer. And it makes me sad because it's opened up my eyes to see what I truly have in store for me, what's waiting for me out there in the future. And it's just a tiny glimpse of what I'm capable of achieving within my short life. However, I doubt that I could get the right legal paperwork done in order to move to the US to work for a job such as YouTube, which is really not in control of the government. And the last thing that I want to do is to go to the US to work in a legal job as an illegal immigrant. So as of this moment, I feel like I have to pass up yet another opportunity. And it makes me feel like I just keep letting my dreams slip from my hands once more. And now that I've seen the reality of what is possible, this house in LA next to the beach on California with a huge city, great weather, and working a job that I would absolutely love and live for with people who share the exact same dream and vision, it has me thinking like, Hell yeah, I would gladly die chasing this dream relentlessly, then never chase it at all and play it safe and being trapped within my own mind of thinking about what my life could have been. I hope to do more videos like this where I speak because they're really like a therapy for me and it helps me get my mind off things and hopefully some people can be influenced by what I'm actually saying. I would also like to say that I think education is extremely important and plays a crucial role into bringing success into your life and that knowledge is power. The best thing in life is to always have a backup plan and take into consideration what if something goes wrong and it's something that every role model that I look up to tries to enforce but I feel like education will always be here for me to come back to whether I'm 20, 25, 40 or whatever and I think that I have an amazing idea, vision, passion and drive now in my peak and that I'm able to capitalize on which makes me feel like I'm throwing it away if I don't pursue it. And the biggest response that I've been getting recently is, Marco, what if it fails? Which I mean, yeah, like what if it fails? But that's the whole point of taking a chance with things like startup companies or entrepreneurship. It's ridiculously high risk. Like what if I get hit by a car? What if I lose my wallet? Or better yet, what if this succeeds? You know, it's easy to be negative or to be closed-minded, but I think it's easier to be optimistic and to be open-minded. And please do yourself a favor, which is a separate topic on its own for another time, but try to surround yourself with people who impose and promote positivity and good vibes. You will notice the tremendous effect that it has on your lifestyle. Starting your own business or being self-employed, although preferable, doesn't exactly require any kind of diploma or degree. And I think that with a proper business plan and with the drive that people like you who are watching this video fuel me with, I feel like I can accomplish anything. If you're still listening, I love you, mad respect. That's true loyalty right there. If you're less, this has been Marco. I hope you all have a great rest of the day and goodbye. By a lot of fail. I fail for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times. And I failed uh, um, like uh, two, three times for the middle school. You know, for three years I tried to fail in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police. They said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> You 20, 24 people went for the job. 23 people accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I rece received it. So to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard for 10 times rejected. <laughs> I know I'll be rejected. Yeah, I just now. want to say that. Yeah, sorry now. <laughs> One of the things you gotta understand, my friend, is that you're supposed to fail. You're supposed to fail because failure is the stepping stone to success. You need the logical reason why. Because failure is an experience that lends to wisdom that ultimately makes you a stronger version of yourself. Maybe you got a test anxiety, I don't know. But the worst thing you can do is quit. Talk to your professor. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that you cannot quit. Just because you fail doesn't make you a failure. Another one of these cliches or cliche stories is about Thomas Edison, right? When a reporter asked him, you know, what is it? How, how do you feel about failing a thousand times? And he said, no, I didn't fail a thousand times. I just found a, th a thousand different ways that it wasn't going to work. 
And that's what's, well, that's what's happening with you. But every time he found a way that didn't work, he was adding to his journey. He was growing stronger. He learned something, he discovered something. You were discovering something about yourself and you're exercising your character every time you get up and try something, move in the direction of something, even if you don't get the thing. It's not about the thing. It's not about making the basketball team. It's not about making a million dollars and it's not about the light bulb. It's about what you learn along the way who you become along the way and you're on the journey and guess what the journey's hard the journey is riddled with failure and that's why most people don't do it most people are willing to get on that journey because they're afraid to fail you my friend have failed congratulations it's the greatest thing that ever happened to you because it shows that you're alive it shows that you did something and it shows that you're growing stronger now go and fail again, bro. I hope I hope you guys that watch these videos, I hope you go and fail a thousand times. Keep going and out there and failing. You know what that means? Every time you fail, it means to me. It tells me that you're doing something. See, a lot of people, because they don't want to make any mistakes, it takes us to the next level. A lot of people don't want to fail. Fear of failure, fear of success, and guess what else? Fear of the unknown. You know what the church has said about courage, Pat? He said, courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. So you want to courageously hold on to your dream and not lose enthusiasm. A guy in Los Angeles, all over the front page of the newspaper, he just passed the bar after taking it 48 times. He had more than enough reason and excuses not to take it. His son has a law firm. He could have been a legal assistant, a clerk, and people all of a sudden used to laugh at this guy. He was a laughing stock. People will do that too. You know, people talk about John Kennedy Jr. failing the bar. Did you read in the newspaper that he passed? I didn't see that, but did they make a bigger deal about him passing as they did when he failed? No, you know why? People like to see you fail. They like to see that. It, people like that. I don't know why it's set up like that. I was on the expressway, traffic was jammed up. You know what was happening? It was an accident. But people pull over to the side to get out of their car to go look. To see somebody else is suffering. That's why talk shows are so popular. So people like to hear other people's misery. Get it caught up in that. Then they go magnified in their own life because that's all they focus on who decided it doesn't matter how many times I fail. I'm going to courageously pursue it. I don't care what people say. I don't care what they think. This is something that I want that gives my life meaning and value. If you constantly remind yourself after every defeat, after every setback, every time you get knocked down, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop, they stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. There's something about the way we perceive success that results in one of the greatest tragedies of our time. And that's the belief that successful people, the ones at the top of their game, that talent is what punched their ticket, that destiny brought them to the finish line. And that's wrong. It's wrong because it takes the journey, the struggle, the scratching and clawing that it took to get to the top of the mountain and throws it out the window. It completely mitigates what's most important. In the real world, the one we are living in, it doesn't matter who you are, you are never entitled to a result, victory is a product of the fight. The biggest favor you can ever do for yourself as you progress through life's up and downs, through the good and the bad, when things get rough, is know that you are going through what every successful person, every champion, every innovator, has gone through in the history of mankind. Struggle is beautiful, it's a sign. 
that you are in the midst of what separates great from average. It's a necessary step and it's the most important step you will ever take because 99% of people can't see past it. Right, the world sees struggle, sees hardship as a time to pack it up, to walk away, to be intimidated. But the best, I'm telling you, they look at struggle differently. Just like you can't get fit without blood, sweat, and tears at the gym. You can't make deals without the hustle. You can't make things happen if you don't move forward in the face of adversity. When the word no is staring you in the eyes, it's all part of the process. Winners walk on. If you want something bad enough, you know that being uncomfortable is an ingredient. If you want to be the best, your mindset has to reflect the best, right? Let others focus on the tip of the iceberg. You know excellence lies in everything underneath the surface, in what cannot be seen. So take mediocrity and make it excellence. Take what's yours and hold it up for the world to see. Because what hurts now in the present is the very same thing that will transform your life down the road.